Hey guys, looks like the old boy is finally moving up in the world. Not exactly how I wanted to do it though, I had to stand on a little step ladder. A while back I said I might have a little problem with this corn in here, trying to get this Hastings Prolific to produce so I could save some seed. It was just getting a little bit too tall. I got nine and a half foot to just purling up here. And this stuff is almost already up to it. Uh, that's a definite problem. I don't see a tassel in sight nowhere. Not the first one. Nine and ten foot tall corn sounds neat. Just to be able to say it. But uh, corn without some ears on the side of it. To me it ain't really corn. It's just a bunch of stalks and something to head for the compost pile. I have been known to try some crazy things. Uh, maybe this growing corn in the greenhouse wasn't such a brilliant idea. I think I'll take the last handful of little seeds I got and we'll try to grow them outside. And in the meantime, we'll just let this stuff go on up, push against the plastic, hope and pray somewhere along the way she decides to make a tassel and uh, see some little ears coming out the side. We'll see what happens. Now before I get into the uh, hydroponic stuff, I want to say a couple of things about it. Uh, why, first of all, why would I even bother with it? Uh, the biggest thing is just the time saver, being able to automate something, just set it up and let it go. Also, the water conservation. Instead of uh, putting water in bags, you know, maybe running out on the ground or having the water in ground directly. Uh, if I put tubs up under my grow bags, you know, that helps, you know, conserve water. But to do a whole lot of this stuff and also to be able to speed up the process, that's what I'm looking for. Also, one thing that I will look for is the quality of the produce and uh, the taste of it. Is it fit to eat? You know, that kind of deal. If it tastes like crap, I'm not going to grow it. But I won't know until I grow it out and see. I know there's a big difference from one variety to another uh, as far as taste goes. But is that difference noticeable in a hydroponic versus a soil setup? We're going to find out. Now, we'll start with the lettuce real quick. Go see what's going on with that. Right here is my little rail system for growing lettuce. Got some butterhead lettuce in there. A variety that is uh, somewhat heat tolerant, which is what I need in here right now. It's pretty warm. This stuff was put in here on March 26th or 27th, one or the other. Today's uh, Easter Sunday. Looking pretty good so far. I was told that lettuce would be the simplest thing for me to grow to get started with it and so far so good. This stuff is coming along pretty nicely. I didn't go ahead and fill out all three rails. I just did two since I was just getting started with it to see how it turned out. What I want to do is try to get one run of lettuce out of this thing before it just gets too hot to work with in here. And everybody likes to look at the roots to see how the roots are doing down in there. That's going to be a nice little head of lettuce right here. Nice and clean. Won't have any dirt on it. Nice clean roots on there. Doing good. Doing real good. For a newbie, I ain't doing half bad. Looking at it from the end, nothing fancy, nothing uh, that stands out that's different from anything anybody else has done. I just run a half inch line down the middle there with separate lines going to each netty cup, make it nice and simple for me. And then built a manifold on the end and that just dumps down in this tub right here where I got a little small submersible pump and we got a couple air stones in there and we're using this uh, little multi-valve air pump right here for the time being. I'm going to eventually take this one since it's a lot bigger than what I got on my Dutch bucket stuff and uh, swap them out. As far as nutrients go, basically all I've done is taken what I was using for the tomatoes and just weakened it down a little bit and uh, filled up the reservoir, turned the pump on, and let it go. The folks told me lettuce was easy to grow, and looking at uh, how well it's doing right now, if I could just keep the temperatures down a little bit, um, we're gonna be just fine. Right here is my Dutch bucket system that I set up. You know, I had these three sitting up on the table over there, side by side by side. And it got a little bit crowded, so I built this little system right here, a little temporary, to get them set up and give them some room to breathe. That right there is a nice looking tomato plant. 
for about 30, 35 days or so, give or take. Not bad at all, and especially for somebody who don't know what they're doing. Looking real good. And what I have here, this is just a little cheap aquarium pump that you get from, get from the store somewhere. And just using a five gallon bucket. I've only got, uh, actually got four buckets here. So five gallons ought to be plenty to uh, feed four plants. And what I did to try to keep the heat down, I wrapped that insulated foil around my bucket and also use it for the lid right here. And inside I just got the same little uh, 264 pump that pumps up to it. And everything drains out of the Dutch buckets back into this primary uh, dump line and just dumps back into the reservoir here. This thing is working out real good. Just like with the lettuce, what I've got is a half inch line that I run up beside the buckets and then come off of it with the little quarters and let it dump right into the uh, hydrotten and just drain through the bucket. And the way it works, it builds up to about right there, goes through another elbow inside and then dumps into this uh, drain line right here. It goes right back to the bucket. That's a really neat system and uh, I like this. As for what I'm feeding these tomatoes right here and the lettuce too, I'm using this 41838 Tomato Special. It's a water soluble fertilizer. And they give you the mixing instructions to mix it up in 100 gallons of water. And what I did was sit down with a calculator and break it out to a, a five gallon bucket to see what I would need in it. So what I did was just round those numbers up and make it 12, 12, 6. Basically, it, basically it's 221. I got, this is uh, the calcium nitrate. I put my fertilizer in here, Epsom salt in here. And then I take my little scale, use this to uh, fill it up, turn it on, and I measure it out to uh, 12 grams, 12 grams, 12, and then six of this. Put it in a five gallon bucket and turn it on. And this right here is a pretty special plant. This is a Trinidad scorpion pepper. I've got about six or seven of these things growing, and I had one that was a little runt. It was just lagging behind everything else. So what I decided to do is I take him and stick him in a Dutch bucket and start feeding him on a consistent basis and just see what would happen. And he's got little buds coming out the top. He's already passed the others as far as size goes. And that is a healthy looking plant right there. I think that's pretty clear evidence that this Dutch bucket stuff is uh, definitely something to look into. And the nutrient mix that I have right now is working pretty darn good. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this time. Uh, I'm pretty pleased with how well things are going. Uh, the hydroponic stuff is looking very promising to me anyway. I don't have a PPM tester. I don't have a pH meter. I don't have any of that stuff that supposedly I would need to be able to do this properly and get this stuff to grow. So I'm thinking if I don't know what I'm doing and the stuff is growing, once I get things figured out, ought to work out pretty darn good. So hopefully in a few weeks, I'll be able to check back in and show y'all that the plants haven't died, that they're still living and actually producing. Uh, if not, if I have managed to kill them, uh, like some of that Moringa I got over there, that stuff was looking real good and I potted it in bigger pots and started watering it. Uh, I told y'all I'm probably gonna kill it. I almost did a few of them, but I'm living and learning. And uh, to the day I die, I hope the good Lord still let me keep on learning and just let me keep screwing up because I feel like the best way to learn is to make mistakes. The more you screw up, the more you learn. Y'all take care and I'll see you next time.